There are some very specific questions that people who get involved in network marketing ask when starting out. Now, as with any new business endeavor, you want to try and be as successful as possible and decrease your learning curve so that you can get up to speed quickly and start earning money. Among the questions people ask are, why are some people so successful in network marketing, or MLM, while others struggle day after day with limited success? Also, what do successful network marketers and direct sellers know about the network marketing industry that the average person doesn't? A successful network marketing professional has a million dollar mind. What makes a million dollar mind? Let's get started with our training and find out how to emulate their success. Tonight, we're going to be uh, doing a training on your million dollar mind. And, you know, mindset is something that's extremely important in our businesses. Uh, no matter what products we promote, no matter if you were doing traditional business or network marketing business or, you know, selling products or selling services, you know, in order to be successful, there's one thing that is a common denominator among many, you know, of the successful people out there and that is you know how they think about themselves and about their business and about their opportunity and you know it's a certain mindset we need to have if we want to emulate that success that uh, we see by other people and so uh, what we're going to uh, do is you know we're going to talk about that what is it that separates you know the millionaires and the successful people from the rest of the population we're going to find that almost all of them adhere to the same basic principles and you know we can too if we want to emulate their success so, you know, what what are some of these things that millionaires do differently? So, I'm going to jump right in. Here we go. And, you know, the biggest obstacle that we have in our business, and I'm sure every single person can attest to this, at one time or another, you've, you know, maybe thought too much about something or you focused on, you know, something that was not productive to you in your business and it held you back or you were afraid to take a risk. So, you know, your mind can be your biggest obstacle in, in your success, and you have to literally program your mind for success. You know, in our whole lives, we've been programmed a certain way and never really been told how important it was to think a certain way if we wanted to achieve our goals. And, you know, it's something that really should be taught from the time children are very, very young, and I'm trying to instill it in mind, even as young as, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years old. So, you know, the first thing we have to do is provide some very specific key elements that we have to work on, just have to be worked on all the time in order to develop the same mindset as those that are successful. And it really is not that, you know, anyone is smarter than anyone else, that someone is not luckier than anyone else or, you know, anything like that. They, these people just know how to program their minds for success. Well, then, of course, that leads us to the question of how, then, do you program your mind? It starts with a crystal clear picture of your business and it starts with a clear picture of where you want to be in your future and you've got to bring that really into focus you've got to know what you want you've got to know how you're going to get there uh, maybe not every step of the way but you've got to at least know what the next step is to move you there and you know out in the future you've seen you know what it is that you want to do accomplish obtain whatever you know maybe it seems very very hard to get there you know if your goal is to buy a new house you don't see how that's possible because the house of your dreams maybe is uh, you know two million dollars you know, so immediately you think, well, it'll never happen. Well, you know, that right there, your mind is now your biggest obstacle <laughs> because who, why, why that don't even creep in there? You know, you need to say, hey, the heck with that. Maybe I can. Maybe there's a way. If I work hard, do this, I need this much down, you start coming up with the different steps that it takes to achieve a goal. No matter how lofty or how small, things have to happen in, you know, a logical progression and through setting up a plan and, you know, then following that plan, no matter what. You know, obstacles, as we say, uh, you know, get in your way. And that's all, you know, about the warrior mindset, which I've done a webinar on specifically on that. And that has to do with the fact that, you know, you've got to think like a warrior. A warrior failure is not an option. Quitting is not an option. It's just not an option. You've got to go through whatever obstacles are in your way and uh, around them, through them, over them, under them. However, you need to get around th those obstacles that are holding, you know, us back from whatever it is that we're, we're trying to obtain or achieve. So, you know, that's the most important thing is having that crystal clear focus and saying, okay, at this point in time, I'm going to be at this rank, I'm going to be earning this month, I'm going to have this many people in my downline, it's going to happen by this day. It just can be as simple as that, you know, have a very general picture of where you want to be at what point in time. And, you know, take a second right now as I'm, you know, kind of talking before I get to my next point and jot that down real quick to yourself. Have that crystal clear 
really concrete, written down where you want to go. And uh, there's some exercises for that. We're going to get to that a little later. Because basically, you know, hoping for something, wishing that something would happen, waiting for something to change, none of that is going to help us if we don't have those specifics. And we've got to know what everything's going to be like. We need to know what it's going to look like, feel like, taste like, see like, hear like, smell like, all of that. You know, if it's to be on the beach in your house, you know, taste the salt there. Feel the heat hitting your face. You know, the, the, feel the waves hitting you as you're, you know, laying on your raft out there. <laughs> so, you know, you involve all your senses. It's extremely important to do that and to slip into that state once or twice a day to really get yourself programmed for it and to direct your actions to that end result. You've got to declare those intended results that we want to achieve in the form of powerful statements called affirmations. I'm sure we've all heard this, you know, affirmations before. If you haven't, it's simply just a positive statement that's uh, made in the present as if it's already occurred and it's done with emotion and it's done very, you know, much to the point where you involve as many senses and your emotions as much as you can to really feel these things before they happen. And lo and behold, given enough time and, you know, given the right set of circumstances and given the right actions, these things will come into be reality. And it's an incredible thing to see happen. And when it starts to happen, even on a small scale, you can then become much more confident in its ability to work for loftier goals. You know, if you see it works for small things, you know, how am I going to, you know, just take care of, you know, this today? And it gets taken care of. Well, you know, there's one uh, small little proof that, uh, you know, things can happen if we put our mind to it. And that's really all it takes. We're creatures of habit, right? We do things over and over again without even thinking about it. So we've got to break the cycle when it's a bad habit that's slowing us down or causing us not to move in the direction we need to move in or we want to move in. Remember, desire and just wishing and wanting something is not enough. We've got to do something about it. <clears throat> it starts with our minds and our thoughts. So observe their thoughts and only choose to follow those that are going to lead you closer to your goals financially, physically, emotionally, whatever your goals are. You know, this can be used, you know, for anything. Just, you know, we happen to be talking specifically about, you know, a business opportunity and earning money and changing our financial situation. So every time you're presented with a question, you simply ask yourself a question. Will this action or will this take me closer to or further away from my goals? Which is it going to do? And if the answer is going to take me further away, well, guess what? Now you get a decision to make. Should I really do it anyway? and be irresponsible, or should I not do this action because it's really not going to benefit me in any way right now? And sometimes this can you know, be something that uh, it might be something we enjoy buying, but yet the, it's not an essential item, and we would be better off shifting that money to helping build our business by purchasing products or marketing materials or taking out an ad. You know, I mean, there's ways that we can sacrifice short-term for long-term gains. You know, and you need to ask yourself, am I willing to work really hard for the next, you know, I'm not saying forever, but, you know, work really hard for the next, say, three to five years and do, you know, what has to be done in order to take off the rest of my life. And that's really what it, what it comes down to is if you build your business strong enough, then you can take off and let it run itself after a period of time and just periodically kind of maintain things. And that's the ideal in a lot of businesses, you know, it's the whole concept behind residual income and royalty income for everyone from those who make movies and do all kinds of merchandising and licensing deals and who write songs. I mean, these are all people that do the work once, lay it down, create something, and then get paid for it over and over again. Now, some principles of money. Obviously, the basic money principle is that you know money is extremely important in the areas in which it works, but it's really unimportant in areas that it does not work. I mean, money is very important for certain things, yet the areas in which it doesn't work, it's completely useless. So it's important, but not for everything, right? Money can't buy me love, as the saying goes, as the song goes.